right, in this video, we're going to use a marginal tax rates table, and the one I'm going to be using here is from nerdwallet.com. This is the 2019-2020 federal income tax table. So depending on when you are watching this video, these numbers or percentages may be different, but the work we're going to do is going to be the same. And what we want to do is we want to use this table here to find the amount of tax owed by Sarah in this situation. Now, since Sarah is the head of household, that is the table I have pulled up over here. The numbers you see here can be different if you're filing single or filing jointly, and it also changes from year to year. So she is head of household and her taxable income is $120,000. She is also entitled to a $9,000 tax credit. Now, since this amount right here, $120,000 is her taxable income, all deductions and or exemptions have been taken away from her gross income to find her taxable income. You got to keep those words in mind. So she's going to pay taxes on this amount, though her gross income, I'm sure, was higher than this. Now, the tax credit, that's a completely different topic, too. We'll worry about this $9,000 tax credit at the end of the problem. So using this table over here. For the first $13,850 that Sarah has a taxable income of, she will have to pay 10% of that. Now, since she clearly made more than $13,850, she's going to pay the full 10% of that first $13,850. So to do that quickly, we can take 10%. I'm just going to use a decimal here. Of means multiply. And let's do the complete $13,850. And finding 10% of $13,850, she will pay $1,385 for that first $13,850. Now here's the deal. The tax owed on this amount of money here is this much money. Now we have to keep on going through this table because clearly she's going to pay more taxes since she made more money. So the next tax bracket, if you will, is 12%. Now what she's going to do here, she's going to pay 12% of any amount between the 13,850, which is 13,851, up to 52,850. And again, she made more than this, so she is going to pay 12%, again using a decimal, and we're not going to multiply by 52,850. You may say, well, that's what we did up here. We just multiply by this number. But what we have to bear in mind is that the tax owed on this 13,850 here, we've already computed that. She's going to pay 12% for any amount between this and this right here. So a way we do that is we take 52,850 bucks. She did make more than that, so she's completely filling this bracket. But what we want to do here is we want to subtract off the 13,850 because we have already computed the tax owed for that amount. And depending on what calculator you have, if you have parentheses, you can type it in something very similar to what you see here. Basically, I'm just pretty much typing it in exactly like I see it. And again, we're finding the 12%, not of 52,850, but the difference between these two values. And again, that is because we have already found the tax owed on that first $13,850. But finding 12% of this, we get 4680 So that's going to be the tax owed up to this amount. The next tax bracket will be 22%. So we're going to do 22%. And now this pattern will continue. So we have already found the tax owed up to 52850 now, she did make more than $84,200, but we don't want to find 22% of that full amount. We want to find 22% of the difference between this $84,200 and 52850 And again, that is because we have already found the tax owed on these first two brackets. So let's subtract that off. And again, typing in something very similar to what we had from the previous step. We will get the amount of tax owed here to be 6897 Now we're almost done. The next tax bracket is where Sarah's going to fall into, if you will, because Sarah did make $120,000. So 
So $120,000 does fall somewhere in between here. She's going to pay 24% of, now what we don't want to do here is we don't want to use the 160,700 like we did previously because she did not make this. Since she falls in this bracket, we're going to take what she made, the 120,000, and now similar to the previous two steps, we will find the difference between that amount and the 84,200. So subtracting that off, the tax owed there would be $8,592. Now, the total amount of tax owed, we're going to take each individual amount here and we want to add all of those together. And again, I know I don't have them lined up, but make sure you're adding the 1385, the 4680, the 6897, and the 8592. The total sum there will be $21,554. Now, this is the amount of tax owed if you are not entitled to a tax credit. But Sarah is. Sarah is entitled to a $9,000 tax credit. And the word credit is important. Once you find the tax owed, if you have a tax credit, you can subtract that tax credit from the total amount of tax owed. So let's come in here and let's subtract the $9,000. And this final answer here, with this tax credit subtracted off, the amount of taxes that Sarah will owe is $12,554. Now, when you're doing these types of problems, if you don't have a tax credit given in that problem, we don't subtract anything off and we would simply be done right there. In other situations, you may see an exemption or deduction those are applied before you find the taxable income. Now I can do more videos on that in the future. And there you have it, finding the amount of tax owed in this particular example using the marginal tax rates table from nerdwallet.com for the year 2019-2020 tax season. If you like what you see and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or similar examples to this problem here, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.